So we are going to reflect a special chapter from the Bible in these coming days from today in a special way. And that is about St. Peter and especially the last days of his Jesus time. What happened to Peter? So we are going to reflect about that denial of St. Peter in a special way. So it will be a great help for us as we come closer to the Holy Week experience. Let's read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 54. We read like this, 22, verse 54. The Word of God says, Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. You know, as you all know, Peter is one of the most important apostles, the first among all equals. Peter, John, James, these are the three people who are in the circle of the disciples of Jesus. Out of these three, Peter is the highest one, the leader of all the twelve. And Jesus used to disclose everything to Peter and Jesus was so close to Peter. And when there was a time when Jesus was going through a tough time, Peter doesn't want to leave Jesus but at the same time, Peter doesn't want to be with Jesus. So that is when he kept a distance and followed. So there are people in Christianity too, there are so many Christians who follow Jesus at a distance. Why? Because they don't want to deny Jesus, but at the same time, they don't want to be close to Jesus. They don't want to be so close to Jesus, but at the same time, they don't want to deny Jesus. So when you are in such situation, that is when you keep a distance from God. I have seen many people saying, oh, I'm not so spiritual, but I go for mass and all once in a while. And I once in a while, maybe once in a year or, some, or so, I go for confession. So these are the people who keep a distance from Jesus. It is because they don't want to deny Jesus, but at the same time, they, want to, they don't want to follow Jesus closely. So there are so many people like this. Peter was one of them. And what happened? Peter committed sin. Because of which? Because of this distance from, the, from Jesus that made him to fall into sin. So there are people, even today, you can see so many Christians who think it's okay. Once in a while, uh, small, small sins. Once in a while, uh, it is, the spirituality is like a, only a free time entertainment Otherwise, you don't need to follow Jesus and word of God and spiritual life so closely. You need to be everything in moderation. Even spirituality also in moderation for some people. We read like this, Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 10. We read, thus says the Lord concerning these people. Truly, they have loved to wander. They have not restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Bible says truly they have loved to wander. They love to wander here and there. They don't want to control their feet. They don't want to control their tongue. They don't want to control the eyes. They don't want to control the emotions and feelings. Their hands and legs. They just want to wander in from one sin to another, one enjoyment to another, one pleasure to another. So they don't want to control their feet, control their body parts. The Lord says, the Lord does not accept them. Because they have no control, self-control. Self-control is a gift God has given to human beings, not given to the animals. Given to the human beings so that we may use it. So, there are so many things God has given us. We have to control. God has given us eyes. Does it mean we can see everything what we want? God has given us eyelids to close it whenever it's needed. God has given us mouth and tongue. Does it mean we can speak everything what we want? That is why God has given us lips to close it once in a while. Uh, so that we may control it. Every part of our body. God has given us this self-control. And God wants us to use this self-control because this is a gift God has given us to the human beings. So there are people who do not have control on themselves and involve and indulge in all these pleasures. God says the Lord does not accept them. He will remember their iniquity. Their sins will never be taken away. Let's read Isaiah 22 verse 13 and 14. We read like this. But instead... 
there was joy and festivity killing oxen and slaughtering sheep eating meat and drinking wine and they said let us eat and drink for tomorrow we are going to die so some people they enjoy the pleasures of this world drinking eating and all these things and saying tomorrow anyway we are going to die let's enjoy today let's enjoy maximum these are the enjoyment that is available now when i remember one person said one person was advising me father after you all die you know when you die when you go to heaven god will ask you i created so many beautiful things why didn't you enjoy it i have given you so many alcohol bottles and different varieties why didn't you enjoy it i have given you so many human beings so many girls so many men and why didn't you go and enjoy this world i created it for you and why didn't you enjoy so that is why father i am enjoying everything my dear brothers and sisters these are all justifications of the evil one and everybody who have common sense will understand that this is not correct judgment because they have gone away from the lord by getting into that that's why in the adoration time we we already saw those who are addicted to these they cannot make correct judgment they cannot tell you the truth they cannot tell you what is right and wrong they they are brainwashed by some kind of untruth therefore they are they are already slaves to slaves to that ideologies and they will go on justifying it because they cannot give the correct vision and correct judgment i have seen many people even so called spiritual people giving certain advices which even a basic common sense with a person with the basic common sense can say it is wrong but still they have they have not they have no they don't understand i have seen even so called spiritual leaders who take some such kinds of decisions in the parish in the communities in the dioceses in many places and people ordinary people wonder how come this priest do like this how can he say like this how can he behave like this but if we speak to them they will have their own justification they will justify in such a way that they are 100% right my dear brothers and sisters if we are addicted to unholy things we will make mistakes in our decisions in our judgments so lord says those people who think oh let's eat and drink and tomorrow we anyway we are going to die the lord of hosts has revealed himself in my ears the lord said to my ears to the prophet god said surely this iniquity will not be forgiven this attitude of these people will not be forgiven praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters this is something that we that is why in the bible you know uh, you know peter he kept a distance he thought spirituality is in a walk okay, keep a distance from god let god go there and i will go from far but it is dangerous then the moment you keep a distance from god and spirituality you are in the range of the evil one range of evil one dominion of the evil one any time you will fall into sin and deny god and that is why we read like this the next word was to 55 when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard he sat down together with them so there were some people some soldiers they came, because it's very cold so they kindled some fire in the middle of the courtyard and they were sitting around some men and women there out so he and also went and sat there with them the one who is supposed to sit with jesus if he doesn't sit with jesus he will sit with someone else if you are called to follow jesus if you don't follow jesus you will follow somebody else if you are a chosen one of god who is supposed to be attached to jesus and if you don't get attached to jesus you will be attached to somebody else anyone who is supposed to be in the group of god in the close circle of jesus will go and sit in different whatsapp groups and there are many people who are part the part you know they are members of so many unnecessary and holy whatsapp groups and they sit there and entertain and when we ask why do you, why are you there because let me see what they are posting just for a curiosity just for a momentary pleasure just to see i am not going to post or i am not going to do anything i just want to see what they are going to post my dear brothers and sisters 
there are so many wrong groups in this world whether it's whatsapp facebook instagram whatever may be it if you go and sat there you will deny god you just out of curiosity if you may you may go and sit there but that's enough you will deny god remember this is what happened to the first pope the first pope went and sat in a wrong whatsapp group and then they put so many unnecessary messages there in here and there and he one after the he after he started denying him denying his master first pope first pope he didn't know that this is so dangerous but god had already warned him this is not good for you these groups be careful you will deny me before the cross is but then he took it for granted he thought okay it's okay he didn't know when he is going to deny after denial he remembered oh this is what my master told me that i will deny my dear brothers and sisters the wrong friendships and connections wrong attachments wrong whatsapp group facebook group and all the instagram group and many other groups be very careful if you see anything that is not fit for you as a christian that is posted over there and discussed among them get out of those groups otherwise soon or later you will start denying god there are people who think okay it's only for some moment father i'm with this group i'm with this company with this friendship i'm only for some time let me enjoy some time until i finish this graduation until i finish this university until i finish this staying here until i finish this work here in this company i'm just with them we read first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 we read like this do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals my dear brothers and sisters you know what happened to peter peter is the highest one the leader of the groups 10 12 disciples jesus is the new moses and peter is the new aaron and when there is a distance from Jesus and Peter Peter committed sin of denying Jesus three times this is what happened to Moses one day Moses was on mount sinai with god 40 days fasting and praying and that was the day god gave them covenant the 10 commandments and then normally god Moses used to take Aaron and and other people along with him to the mountain but that day aaron was not there with moses not even close to the mountain normally he is to stay little distant but at the same time on the mountain and but away from the people but this time he was with the people aaron was with the people and moses was alone on the mountain he kept a distance moses uh, the aaron kept a distance from moses and he was with the people wrong company and then what happened the people came and told him we need a god moses doesn't seem to be coming back make a god for us and then immediately without even thinking twice aaron committed sin of making another god and golden calf and that's how the whole sin started my dear brothers and sisters the, the same year when jesus is going through a sacrifice a pain inside the cord now his his beloved disciple peter he is keeping a distance with his another group of people and there he committed sin he denied jesus three times let's read this is something impatience will lead to compromise aaron was impatient because moses did not come in time so he was impatient people were impatient and therefore they compromised they thought it's only for some time but then god doesn't seem to be coming moses doesn't seem to be coming back and therefore they became impatient and then they committed sin impatience will lead you to sin even peter he didn't know what is going to happen so he was not patient enough to just to be with god but he went and sat with someone else and then he committed sin we read like this exodus chapter 32 was one onwards 
when the people saw that moses delayed to come down from the mountain the people gathered around to aaron and said to him come make gods for us who shall go before us as for this moses the man who brought us out out of the land of egypt we do not know what is become of him so they were so impatient because moses doesn't seem to be coming in time so when god doesn't seem to be answering your prayers you become impatient that is dangerous impatience is also a testing period but at the same time it's also time for you to fall into sin it's a time for a time of temptation be very careful at that moment of impatience when you feel impatient because god doesn't seem to be answering your prayers immediately then there is a possibility that you may co- fall into sin we read first samuel chapter 13 verse 8 first samuel chapter 13 verse 8 Saul king Saul waited 7 days let's read verse from 6 onwards when the israelites saw that they were in distress for the troops were hard pressed the people hid themselves in caves and in holes and in rocks and in tombs and in cisterns verse 7 they were all hiding they were all waiting some hebrews crossed the jordan to the land of gad and gilead Saul was still at gilgal and all the people followed him trembling verse 8 he waited 7 days the time appointed by samuel you know samuel the prophet is supposed to come and do a sacrifice and therefore king saul is already there waiting he waited 7 days 7 days means say it's a long time it's not exactly 7 days it means it can be even years or it can be even months so it's a long time so 7 is a perfect number so he waited 7 days the time appointed by samuel but samuel did not come to eat gilgal and the people began to slip away from saul then he waited 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 but the prophet doesn't seem to be coming and then the king saul got upset and people also got fed up and one by one people started slipping away started moving away and then was nine Saul said okay okay everybody is moving so bring bring the burnt offering here to me and the offerings of well being and he offered the burnt offering normally he is not allowed only the priest or the prophet is allowed to do that the offering of the burnt offering only the priest is allowed to do that the prophet is supposed to do that but king said okay i'm going to do it if i'm if he is coming late it's enough it is too much i'm impatient i'm going to do this burnt offering by myself and was 10 as soon as he had finished the offering the burnt offering samuel arrived exactly when he finished samuel came and saul went out to meet him and salute him so saul came out and greeted him though saul is a king but in front of a prophet he was so respectful and he saluted him was 11 samuel said what have you done samuel was so angry saul replied when i saw that the people were slipping away from me when i saw i'm losing my popularity people are leaving leaving me and you did not come within the days appointed you does, doesn't you don't seem to be coming in time and the philistines are mustering at mikmash three things made him to commit this sin one losing popularity everyone is moving away from him second god doesn't seem to be coming in time and helping him third enemies are increasing and disturbing him from every corner these three things made him impatient and fell in made him fall into a sin my dear brothers and sisters the same three things can even affect our spiritual life even today we may deny god we may go away from the presence of god we may commit terrible sins because we are losing importance in the community in the society in our relation with the husband wife and children and in everything we seem to be losing a popularity we are not more important in the world in this world in our friendship second god doesn't seem to be helping us god doesn't seem to be answering our prayers god is not performing any miracle so then we got disappointed third one our enemies are there increasing from every corner so when these three things comes that is when we deny god that is when we lose faith in god that is when we will lose hope in god and that is when we fall into sin and that is how the first king of israel fell into sin therefore impatience is dangerous let's read psalm 27 verse 14 
27 verse 14 read this word of god wait for the lord be strong let your heart take courage and wait for the lord always wait for the lord even if he seem to be coming late wait for the lord be strong let your heart take courage you may feel like disappointed but take your take courage wait for the lord psalm 25 verse 3 we read like this do not let those who wait for you be put to shame let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous and verse chapter 31 verse 24 we read like this be strong and let your heart take courage all you who wait for the lord all those are waiting for healing deliverance miracles those are waiting for the lord be strong and let your heart take courage he will never disappoint you 37 34 we read like this 37 34 we read like this word of god says and also let's read uh, take delight in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart 37 verse 4 and let's read 40 verse 1 40 verse 1 we read like this i waited patiently for the lord and then he inclined to me and heard my cry all those who wait patiently for the lord the lord will incline to me and to you and hear your prayer hear, hear your cry chapter 130 verse 5 130 verse 5 we read like this i wait for the lord my soul waits and in his word i hope the third sin of peter why did he go and sat with those people we read verse 55 he when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together peter sat among them why did he go and sat among these people because he thought he's he's following jesus even when he's following jesus even when he was sitting alone with this group he thought he's following jesus but in fact he was keeping a distance and he was sitting somewhere else many a time it can happen even when we commit sin we still feel that we are following jesus even when we are in the wrong relationship we still we feel we are good we are holy we are connected to god we are still following god and the second reason why peter felt to sit along with them because peter knew he is not going to be sitting there forever it's only for some time just to escape from the noticing being noticed by others so he wanted to escape from being noticed by others therefore he is he is there sitting and enjoying the warmth of the fire because it's only for a momentary time it's only for some time he knows that but even if it is only for momentary time if you entertain evil and wrong friendship and wrong connections you will deny god many people even today they know it's only until i become old or until it is only in the young period young age is time for me to enjoy my life and go for all connections and friendships and enjoy a life later i will start attending retreat and start a new life there are many people who justify saying this is only for momentary time i'm not going to do this forever i'm not going to smoke forever i'm not going to drink every time i'm going to do only for this moment maybe until i finish my university or until i finish this work until i work here so there are so many justifications people say even peter thought anyway he has come here following jesus and he's sitting there only for a, a period of time a small period of time we read like this in the word of god deuteronomy 23 verse 14 deuteronomy 23 14 word, word of god says even for small things even for a small period of time if there is anything unholy or indecent among you in your relationship in your family in your home the lord says i will turn away from you i will turn away from you if there is anything unholy or indecent among you let's read first Thessalonians in chapter 14 sorry chapter 4 verse 3 onwards everybody repeat after me this is the will of god this is the will of god your sanctification your sanctification that you abstain from fornication that you abstain from fornication so god's will of god for you and for me is sanctification so that we may abstain from every kind of fornication 
fornication means any sexual relationship before marriage and any kind of unholiness before marriage so abstain from this was next one that each one of you know how to control your own body in holiness and honor bible says each one of us know we know how to keep our body holy we know how to keep our body holy in holiness and honor we all know it. it's not that we don't know we all know this is evil and this is right this is good this is bad we know it and we need to do it verse 5 not with the lustful passions don't encourage in the body lustful passions even if it is for a small day or maybe for one day or one mo moment don't encourage it don't do it with lustful passions like the gentiles who do not know god those who know god will never entertain such kinds of lustful passions only those who do not know god will entertain the such things verse 6 we read that no one wrong or exploit a brother or sister in this matter bible says if you have a lustful tendency make sure you have to be pure and holy in your body and also make sure that you don't entertain anyone else and exploit them your brother or sister in the same manner in the same matter in the lustful matter do not take you know make use of the weaknesses of others there are people who try to cheat them pretend that love and they are having lust and they pretend that they have sincere love and make them fall in love and relationship and and uh, attachment in intimacy at the end use and throw the lord says that no one wrong or exploit a brother or sister in this matter because the lord is an avenger in all these things this is something very dangerous if anyone exploits someone else who is seem to be weak with your beauty with your capacity with your talents you attract people with your makeups with your any other material things if you try to influence or exploit the weakness of others and misuse them and abuse them we will be answerable in front of god and the lord says the lord is an avenger in all these things the lord is an avenger god cannot tolerate these things just as we have already told you this is not the first time saint paul is talking about this holiness he says which we have already told you and solemnly warned you saint paul solemnly warned people saying never ever abuse or make take for granted the weaknesses of the people and make use of it and desecrate the bodies of others with the even by cheating and abusing make sure that you don't do that because this is dangerous because the lord is an avenger in all these things and the saint paul had already warned them many times and now again solemnly warning them because this is dangerous we read verse 7 for god did not call us to impurity but in holiness god called us to be holy god never called us to impurity any kind of impurity whether small or big whether you do it alone or publicly or with others everything is forbidden the lord says any kind of impurity let's read verse 8 therefore whoever rejects this rejects not human authority but god when and the lord saint paul says when i preach this if anybody rejects this teaching they are not rejecting human authority they are rejecting god himself who also gives his holy spirit if there is unholiness the holy spirit cannot stay in that house in that family in that person and that is why he says he is the one who gives you holy spirit now let's read isaiah 20 22 verse 12 we read like this isaiah 22 verse 12 in that day the lord god forced called to weeping and mourning to boldness and putting on sackcloth god called everyone to do penances and sacrifice then what did some people do they said but instead there was a joy and festivity some people did not go for this lenten season they even in the lenten season they were busy joy and festivals killing oxen slaughtering sheep eating meat and drinking wine and they were saying anyway we are all going to die soon or later so let us enjoy maximum drink and eat tomorrow we are going to die 
and then verse 14 we read like this the lord of hosts has revealed himself in my ears surely this iniquity will not be forgiven you until you die says the lord god of hosts this will not be forgiven because this is a purposeful sin even if it is for small short period and there are many people because they want instant blessing and instant healing and instant deliverance instant things therefore they seem they feel god is not blessing them instantly therefore in order to get instant blessing and healing they go for black magic they go for shortcuts they go to babas and pujaris and other people and they go for sorceries and they entertain evil practices by doing so they are bringing destruction in their own personal life we read like this isaiah 47 verse 8 onwards isaiah 47 verse 8 let's all read now therefore hear this now therefore hear, hear this. this you are you lover of pleasures you, you lover, lover of pleasures. pleasures who set sit securely who sit securely who say in your heart who say in your heart i am i am and there is no one besides me and, and there is no one besides me i shall not sit as a widow i shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children or know the loss of children verse 9 both these things shall come upon you in a moment both these things shall come upon in you one in, day, in one day the loss of children the loss of children and widowhood and widowhood shall come upon you shall come upon in you. full measure in full measure in spite of you are many sorceries in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments and the great power of your enchantments even if you do these enchantments and sorceries you will have to go through these problems and this will not help you the lord says this will in fact cause problems for you let's read verse 10 you felt secure in your wickedness you felt secure in your wickedness because when they did all this black magic they found they thought they, they will be secure and you said and you said no one sees me no one sees me your wisdom your wisdom and your knowledge and your knowledge led you astray led you astray and you said in your heart and you said in your heart i am I am there is no one besides me there is no one besides me verse 11 but evil shall come upon you the lord says evil shall come upon you which you cannot charm away because you have done enchantments sorceries therefore evil will come upon you which you cannot charm away disasters shall fall upon you which you will not be able to ward off and ruin shall come upon you suddenly of which you know nothing ruins will come verse 12 we read stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries with which you have labored from your youth perhaps you may be able to succeed perhaps you may inspire terror bible says if you hold fast to enchantments and sorceries even black magic which you study from your youth you may hold fast and thinking that it may bring some blessing perhaps it may bring some blessing it may happen maybe you may be able to threaten somebody may be able to destroy someone but bible says verse 13 you are wearied with your many consultations let those who study the heavens stand up and save you bible says if you think they are the ones who are help you to help you now let them come and save you those who gaze at the stars and eat each new moon predict what shall befall you let them come and save you verse 14 see they are like a stubble you know these people those who do enchantments and sorceries and black magics they are like stubble the fire consumes them the fire of god consumes all these unholiness they cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame they cannot deliver themselves all the evil practices and evil those who evil do evil they cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame no call for warming and one self is this no fire to sit before verse 15 such to you are those to with whom you have labored who have trafficked with you from your youth they all wander about in their own paths there is no one to save you the lord is reminding us especially those who have got these tendencies of black magic sorceries and shortcut ways to and encourage 
and to find the solutions instant solutions the lord is warning us praise the lord praise the lord so these are the this is the third one third one is momentary pleasure the first one keeping a distance from god yeah, peter kept a distance second he went to a wrong group and sat with them and the third one is um, he he we just heard that he was going for pleasure of momentary pleasures it was momentary pleasures and the fourth problem that peter had is he used to take haste decisions his decisions used to be very haste instant decisions once he suddenly said you are the son of the most high god he found it successful another time he said you should not suffer and die then jesus said get behind me satan so another time when he was in the in the boat and you they were coming to the shore and he found jesus there and instead of coming in the boat he jumped into the water and came forward and another occasion jesus said he wanted to walk on the water and jesus said come and he jumped and then after he walked for some time and then got scared and then started to sink he is to take decisions instant decisions without much wisdom without much prayer without much, much uh, without much care so he is to make mistakes and he became pope so remember my dear brothers and sisters this instant decisions haste decisions without much prayer was one of the reasons why peter fell into the last sin that is denying jesus three times in front of a wrong people and let's see even in the bible even jesus never used to take decisions instantly even jesus used to spend lot of time in prayer and only then he take decisions though he was son of god himself let's read some passages gospel of john chapter 4 verse 34 gospel of john chapter 4 verse 34 we read jesus said to them my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work my food is to do the will of god jesus always made sure to fulfill the will of the heavenly father he always searched the will of god the father let's read gospel of luke chapter 6 verse 12 gospel of luke chapter 6 verse 12 we read like this now during those days he went out to the mountain to pray and he spent the whole night in prayer to god and verse 13 and then when he day came he called his disciples and chose 12 of them whom he also named apostles he selected 12 apostles is a big decision before taking such a big decision of out of hundreds of people he selected 12 people and as his apostles he spent the whole night in prayer only then he took a decision to select his apostles so even jesus prayed a lot before he select some crucial decisions in his life how come we take many decisions without much prayer we take many decisions with hasty decisions at the end we fall into troubles and problems the lord wants us to spend time in the presence of god and pray a lot only then take decisions so that your decisions may not may not go wrong first john chapter 5 verse 14 let's read first john chapter 5 verse 14 and this is the boldness we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us if you ask anything according to his will he hears us how do you know his will his will will be revealed to you when you spend time in prayer his will will be revealed to you when you spend time in prayer and then he will hear our prayer so word of god says psalm 32 verse 8 we read like this psalm 32 verse 8 i will instruct you and i will teach you the way you should go i will counsel you with my eye upon you god wants to teach us instruct us and help us and help us to walk and he's watching over us therefore we should listen to him for that we need to pray we need to spend time in his prayer in his presence only then he will be able to guide us if we take haste decisions instant decisions without much prayer it won't help us god wants to help us god wants to teach us we read Acts of the Apostle chapter 17 verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being as even some of your own poets have said for we too are his offspring. 
the lord's word of god says it is in jesus we move and he live and have a being and therefore we have to be always get connected because we live in him we move in him we have a being in him therefore this word of god says jo joshua chapter 9 we read verse 14 we read like this so the leaders part took of their provisions and did not ask direction from the lord some leaders they took decisions fast but did not ask directions from the lord therefore they made mistakes in their decisions and they went through the consequence of it so when we are leading a family when we are leading something we need to always make sure to ask the directions of the lord otherwise we may make mistakes we read james chapter 1 verse 5 james chapter 1 verse 5 if any of you is lacking in wisdom then ask god who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly and it will be given you if you are, if you do not know how to take a decision if you do not have the wisdom to take a decision if you don't know where to go what to do ask god pray in front of god spend time in prayer and sacrifices and penances the lord says he will give you without any partiality generously ungrudgingly it will be given to you praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus first john chapter 5 verse 14 first john chapter 5 verse 14 this is the boldness we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us the fifth point is another problem which um, saint peter had is uncontrollable tongue he says something instantly without thinking twice and he made very many mistakes in the bible by speaking uncontrollably especially the most important one is he rebuked even jesus he started teaching a lesson to jesus until then he was the disciple jesus was the master and when jesus was preaching about suffering suddenly he became master and he is ex expecting jesus to listen to him so that is sometimes it happens you know uncontrollable tongue that was another problem of peter let us read this word of god proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 when words are many transgressions is not lacking but the prudent are restrained in speech some people are too talkative always talking 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 if people talk like this too much talk there will be minimum 100 or 200 sins in that conversation gossip unnecessarily judging criticizing wounding insulting making fun of so these way unknowingly or knowingly we may fall into many sins the board the more the words the more the sins better to speak less what is needed what is good what is constructive so peter every time he is to respond first and then he is the one who made mistakes in the bible among all the 12 disciples the other disciples we don't know much about their sins because they kept quiet so this we read like this james chapter 1 verse 26 James chapter 1 verse 26 if any think they are religious if any think they want to be the leaders religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceives their hearts their religion is worthless many people seem to be very religious going for holy mass daily having all the spiritual weapons in their body exposed rosaries in every hands and in neck and also in the pockets in the bags and if they open their bag all the novenas books are there inside and pictures of all the saints in heaven and on earth will be there in another bag another bag and with one benedictin cross on the neck and also in the hand and one bible in another hand and moving around with like this but at the same time when they get a free time after prayer when they get a small free time busy discussing gossiping speaking against others condemning judging others 
and hurting others, keeping and making, finding faults in others. The Lord says, if anybody think they are religious people, do not, and they are not controlling their tongue, tongues, such people deceive their own hearts. And such kinds of spirituality is worthless. The other day one person came and said, Father, there is no meaning in going, going to the church regularly. There is no meaning in having prayer meeting and going and having, uh, going for retreats. Because I know some people in my parish, very punctual for the prayer and holy mass. And they have prayer meeting and they are very charismatic. They always say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But the way they gossip, the way they criticize, the way they judge, the way they create groupism, they, the way they are wait, waiting for uh, positions... We are fed up, Father. That's why I stopped all these kinds of prayers. I used to be very actively participating in such prayer meetings. But now I know these are all nonsense and these are all fake and these are only mask. So this is what that person said. My dear brothers and sisters, there may be people like that. Not everyone is like that. But we have to be, we have to be very careful. Are you one of them? If anything, they are religious, but at the same time, no control on the tongue. They deceive their hearts. They are religious religion. Their religious practices are worthless. Their religious practices are worthless. It's useless. Let's read another passage. James chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. We read like this. So also the tongue is a small member. You know, tongue is not normally not seen outside. It's inside. It's a small member. Only when you want to bite somebody, it comes out. Yet it boasts of great exploits. Yet it boasts of great exploits. Though it's a small member, is hiding inside. But what is coming out of that tongue is, is bigger than atom bomb. Nuclear bomb. It can destroy not one or two, but many at one time. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire? The same way your tongue is so dangerous, my dear brothers and sisters, if you don't take care of it. Verse 6, we read like this. And the tongue is a fire. That may be the reason we, drink, we have to drink a lot of water. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a vault of iniquity. It stains the whole body. Sets on fire the cycle of nature. And is itself set on fire by hell. So tongue is such a dangerous one. We have to control it. We have to be very careful. I used to tell if you are able to control your, if you are religious and if you are holy and if you seem to be very religious practice, uh, practicing religious, religious life religion, then if you control your tongue, almost 75 percentage of your sins will be removed. Then rest some 25 percentage that you can manage. But if you are able to control your tongue, you will be saved. At least you will, the step, first step happened. Verse 7. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue. A restless evil full of deadly poison. So James is so strict with this. You know, we are able to control a big elephant. I was so... One day I happened to watch uh, when I was in, in India. Uh, I saw one small person, a small guy with one small stick controlling such a huge animal elephant. And when he with this stick, when he tells sit down, he, still, he, he sits down. And then stand up, stand up. And he, whatever he commands, this big huge animal listens. He controls with one small stick. So, I felt like respecting this man. 
how could he manage to do this i was so scared to go closer to that big huge animal but he was very easily with with a small small stick he was controlling such a huge animal elephant and you know we have must have seen so many animals are tamed by human beings but is very difficult to tame this small animal which is in your mouth that is our tongue restless evil full of deadly poison if we are able to control this you control your whole life you will be a successful person if you are able to control your tongue let's read this word of god that is philippians chapter 2 verse 14 philippians chapter 2 verse 14 do all things without murmuring and arguing many people the moment there is a problem they start murmuring even the disciples of jesus when they found something wrong they started murmuring when they saw one john and john james are asking for the first place and second place the rest of them started murmuring even the israelites when moses did not come in time they started murmuring do all things without murmuring and arguing verse 15 so that you may be blameless and innocent children of god without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like a stars in the in the world you will be like stars if you are able to do everything without murmuring and grumbling grudging if you are able to control these small small things you will be like the stars in the world in this perverse generation bible is so praising those people who are able to control their tongue unfortunately nobody to receive this praise let's read this word of god first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 first corinthians 10 10 and do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer anybody who complain complain about your job your ministry wherever you are whatever you are what what you have you are complaining always murmuring and grudgingly so oh, what is this what kind of place this why, why am i treated like this why these things are happening to me why these people are like this where are the people you know there are people always complaining and murmuring grumbling they will be destroyed it won't give any benefit but in, you will be destroyed Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 to 6 we read like this Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 but fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among saints don't do fornication and impurity of any kind not only that you should not even speak about it you should not even speak about it that means dirty connotation dirty jokes dirty comments there are people who enjoy commenting dirty with dirty connotations that's a secret satisfaction that they get by cracking dirty jokes on somebody or at their appearance or some something of this sort so this is that is why bible says nothing of this sort should be even mentioned among you because you are saints the early christians were called themselves saints you know in the early church if you will read acts of the apostle all those who are receiving receive baptism they are all called saints saint joseph saint jeremiah saint andre the eight and andre so like this everyone was called saints they were all called saints but after some time some of these saints showed their real color then people felt so ashamed to call them saints and then later the church decided okay only these people can be called saints rest of the people let's wait and see and that's how the church started officially canonizing some people and said these are saints because we checked their life and came to know they are saints so they are saints the rest of the people let us wait may god judge them this one 100% sure they are saints and that's how canonization started it's biblical in the early church everyone was called because they happened to be saints but in between some of some people like us came in between in the church and that's when everyone was confused whether to call this person a saint because his behavior doesn't seem to be a saint so then everyone was confused and then church said okay we will tell you whom to call saints 
Okay, let's read this word of God, chapter uh, 3. Uh, okay, continue reading next word, verse 4. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly and vulgar talk. But instead, let there be thanksgiving, obscene co- conversation. Good conversation, constructive conversation and good communications are good. It's holy. It will build up the communities, build up the society, build up the relationship. But there are people obscene and silly and vulgar talk. This should be entirely out of our communities and personal life. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Let there be thanksgiving. Thanking God, thanking each other, thanking everyone. So this should be there. Verse 6, verse 5. Be sure of this. That no fornicator or impure person. Fornicator means the one who is committing sexual sin before marriage with other people. Impure person means the one who commits sin in his body alone. Any kind of impurity. Impure person. Or one who is greedy. That is an idolater. Greedy. The greed for fame and name and position. That is idolatry. As any inheritors in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So be sure no one of these kind of people will have inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 6. Continue read verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Anyone who support all these kinds of evil things, the wrath of God will come upon them. Let's read Psalm 50 verse 16, 15 onwards. Psalm 50 verse 15 onwards. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Verse 16. But to the wicked God says, What right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? There are some people who are wicked people, but they are very regular in the family prayer, personal prayer, and also for Sunday Mass. They may be the, in the first row, praising God, lifting up the hands. For everyone, their Amen will be louder than anybody's Amen. And after every sentence, they will say Hallelujah and praise the Lord. But God is telling those people who put on religiosity as a mask. The Lord says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? What right you have? Why? Verse 17. For you hate discipline. Because you hate discipline. You don't want to listen to the the commandment of God, commandment of the church, not ready to be obedient to your parents, not ready to be obedient to your parish priest. And in the commandments in the, in the Bible, you don't, you don't, you hate discipline. And you cast my words behind you. You are keeping the word of God behind. When you are asked to forgive, you don't forgive. When you are asked to go for confession, you don't go for confession. And when you are asked to have the personal prayer, you, don't, you are not interested. When you are asked to read the Bible, you are not interested. When you are asked to do almsgiving, charity, fasting, you are not interested. But you want the, to be in the limelight. You want everyone to praise you. You want the fame and name and everything. You want everyone to appreciate you. And you want to be the first. Therefore, what right you have? To pray my prayers and statutes. Because you hate discipline. And you cast my words behind you. Verse 18. Verse 18. You make friendship with a thief. You make friends with a thief. Your friends are all the same categories. You make friendship with only those people who gossip with you. Because you are a gossiper. And the Lord says, you make friends with a thief. When you see one, when you see a thief, you are making friendship with. When you see an adulterer, you make friendship with. The, you keep company with adulterers. Those who dirt, speak dirty things, you are very happy. And every time when you meet, you will be sitting next to him. Because he cracks similar jokes which you like. So the Lord says, you make friends with the thief because you are thief. You make friendship with adulterers because you are adulterer. Therefore, what right you have to pray my statutes and pray my prosody, pray my holy mass? Verse 19. 
you give your mouth free rein for evil you have no control on your tongue no control for your mouth free rein for evil and your tongue frames deceit was 20 you sit and speak against your kin your family you first you speak against your husband your wife your children your parents your neighbor in mother in law son in law daughter in law every in laws you sit and speak against your kin you slander your own mother's child that means you speak against your own brother your own siblings your own sister you do that you speak against in front of the public your family matters are discussed in the public you do that therefore what right you have to pray in front of me was 21 was 21 these things you have done and i have been silent god said you were doing these things all these years but i kept quiet you thought that i was one just like yourself you thought since i'm keeping quiet you thought i'm i'm also happy about it i'm also one among one of you one among you but now i rebuke you and i lay the charge before you i'm not accepting this the lord is telling you my dear brothers and sisters so we will be let us be satisfied with this one sin of peter today we'll continue the next days but but examine our conscience and see do we have this problem no control on the tank uncontrollable tank it is so dangerous it is harmful many of us are lost anointing because of this even lost a connection with god because of this uncontrollable tongue such a perverse evil poisonous one which you have in your mouth that is our tongue be careful about every word that you speak matthew 1236 matthew 1236 we read like this I tell you on the day of judgment you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter on the day of judgment you will have to given care given account for every careless word you utter for your by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned the sixth sin peter committed was this he ignored warnings given to him god gave lots of warning to peter always remember before every sin god gives you and me warnings he has given you and me many warnings before we committed terrible sins god we can see so many passages in the bible where god gives warnings god gave warning to peter we read like this uh, matthew chapter 26 was 34 we read like this Matthew 26:34 Jesus said to him truly i tell you this very night this very night before the cock crows you will deny me three times Jesus repeated it many times and told Peter you are going to deny me you are going to deny me because this man Peter had its overconfidence he had already told Jesus Jesus look at these guys who are sitting around you this 11 of them these people all are going to leave you even if they leave you i will not leave you so he was so overconfident about his i his iness he was overconfident the pride you know the pride the center of the uh, if you take the spellings of pride p r i d e the center is i so that feeling of i was there so strongly in peter and therefore he denied jesus he fell into so many people those who have pride the i feeling though they are given many warnings nowadays we don't need warning for god to come and tell us the warning because bible is there for us word of god is already spoken to us any time when you read the bible passages we are reminded of our sins because god is talking to us now through the word of god those years there was no word of god only the old testament therefore jesus has to speak directly to peter but now we have the word of god in our hand each time when we read the word of god god is convicting you and convicting me so the lord is giving us warnings and then we have to change if not it will be too late to change 
after sin after death we cannot repent repentance mercy compassion all these things are possible only before death therefore the lord is giving us warnings many times even in the old testament we know when cain was about to kill his brother god warned him genesis chapter 4 verse 7 god warned him and said if you do well will you not be accepted if you do not well do well sin is lurking at the door its desire is for you but you must master it the sin is lurking at the door its desire is for you if you don't do the do the things well the sin is lurking at the door it desire is for you you must master it otherwise you will fall into sin god is warning everybody mark chapter 14 was 29 we read mark 14 was 29 we read like this peter said to him even though all become deserters i will not no he said i will not deny but he was the first one to run and uh, so these are the things that we need to remember my dear brothers and sisters god has given us many warnings through the word of god through our parish priest to our father mother and brothers god is warning us don't do these start listening to the word of god start attending retreat start joining the live streaming start going for holy mass start going for confession and change your life this is a bad habit you have to stop it there are so many warnings are given by uh, our lord through many people we have to listen to that so that is the sixth sin of peter and seventh sin let us read this is seventh sin what is the seventh mistake of uh, peter wrong dependency he depended but wrong dependency he depended sometimes he seems to be depending on jesus but many times he had some other dependence too that is why the one who is supposed to depend on jesus he depend on the sword we read matthew chapter 26 verse 51 onwards we read like this suddenly one of those with jesus put his hand on his sword that is in fact peter he drew it and struck the slaves of the high priest cutting off his ear he had already kept a sword with him because of this sword he the moment the soldiers came to catch jesus in order to protect jesus he thought he has to depend on the sword when god almighty standing next to him he depended on the sword without depending on jesus sometimes we think even god cannot help you and then you will find out your own swords and that is another problem of peter he was supposed to trust in jesus and depend on him completely 100% but there was a time he thought he has to protect jesus sometimes because of our confidence we think we have to protect god almighty so this is something wrong we have seen many people in the church many people fighting for fighting for certain ideologies in the name of god saying they are trying to protect god and protect many things so we don't need to protect god god knows how to protect himself and here peter is depending on wrong dependency instead of depending on god many people when they know that god is with them they are not comfortable but they have some money in their pocket they are feeling so comfortable so when they feel they have lots of money in the bank they are so comfortable and happy but when the bank is empty your income is empty you are so uncomfortable and getting angry disturbed so that means your dependency is not on god but on the bank account or the income that we have the lord wants us to be happy always in the presence of god he will take care of you he will he will take care of your past and future and present everything you don't need to worry about anything depend totally on the lord praise the lord and this is what god says let's also read psalm 119 was sorry jeremiah 17 was 5 jeremiah chapter 17 was 5 thus says the lord cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength 
whose hearts turn away from the lord anybody who trust in mere human beings their leaders and positions and high officials and flesh their capacity their strength those who trust in these kinds of things and whose hearts turn away from the lord but not trusting in the lord are cursed they are cursed verse 6 we read like this they shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes they shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land they will never be prosperous verse 7 we read like this blessed are those who trust in the lord whose trust is the lord trust in the lord and their trust is the lord trust in the lord and their trust itself is the lord is very different words but both are very powerful and it should be there they shall be like a tree planted by water sending out its roots by the stream it shall not fear when heat comes when your money is gone you will not be afraid when there is tragedy comes you will not be scared when sickness comes you will not be tensed because the root is so strong therefore it shall not fear when heat comes and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit so these these are the things because wrong dependency is dangerous praise the lord so another sin of the eighth sin of peter so he has a good heart but his body is weak he has a good heart but body is weak and he depended on his body more than his good heart many time many people have good heart but the body is weak so many plans and decisions that they take they are not able to fulfill it they may fulfill it for one or two days some people take a strong decision i will get up early morning three o'clock and pray divine mercy but when three o'clock morning comes they will be continue snoring even if there is a alarm set you can't get up because body is so weak so there are many people good hearted people planning 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 but when it comes to execution body is so weak matthew chapter 26 verse 41 we read like this stay awake pray that you may not come into the time of trial the spirit is indeed is willing but the flesh is very weak so jesus said stay awake be be alert but they did not stay awake they were so they are so weak flesh is weak they fell into sleep praise the lord now the next one was i mean the ninth the ninth mistake of saint peter you know saint peter had a problem he wants to do great things but he forgot small small commitments he is ready for great commitments but he is not ready for small small commitments what did peter say peter said jesus i am ready to die with you die for you even if all these people leave you i will not leave you i will come with you i will die for you jesus did not ask him to die with him jesus only told him can you stay away stay awake for one hour which he failed but dying he is ready but be awake for one hour and pray not ready many christians are like this they are ready to go to some countries and where there is terrorist attack they are ready to go and die maybe with big bullets ready to take in their heart but to stay awake half an hour for holy rosary please don't tell me that father my dear brothers and sisters this kind of spirituality will not help us this was the mistake of peter he speaks bombastic words but when it comes to practical he is not able, even able to be faithful the small things just to stay awake with me one hour he could not my dear brothers and sisters we also we are all, we are the peters we all are the peter we have the peters inside because he is the first pope naturally all of us will have some tendencies of this first pope and remember 
if you are very good in promising big 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 promises but not able to fulfill small small commitments to the lord then remember everything is vain everything is futile and then the tenth sin of peter is this jesus said stay awake and babe and pray matthew chapter 26 verse 41 Jesus said like this stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak stay awake and pray that you may not fall into temptation so why did Jesus tell them to stay awake at least one hour and pray so that he will be successful in the temptation that is going to come after this because Jesus knew he is going to face a big temptation of denying him because Jesus had already warned him so jesus knew this so that is why jesus told him to stay awake and pray one hour not because jesus was so panicked or disturbed and he really needed some prayer but because he told them to stay awake and pray when jesus was praying there he wanted his family community to pray with him not because he was jesus was selfish for his prayer but because they should not fall my dear brothers and sisters when someone when head of the family is in big crisis and when he is in problem when he is praying all the other family members also should be praying otherwise maybe the head of the family may be protected but the others will fall down they will fall down into sin they will be the reason for the head of the family to have problem so make sure that we everyone is in prayer so jesus told the disciple peter be stay awake and pray but he failed therefore jesus went through the suffering and somehow he successfully came out of the temptation and victorious and came to the resurrection but peter had to go through a very terrible days of his life the worst days of his life denying guilt feeling crying and then so many other problems because he did not stay awake and pray many problems can be get removed from your life if you had prayed many crises and problems and temptations could have been removed from your life if you had prayed if only we had listened to him if only we had listened to him we could have we would have escaped from all these torturous temptations all these struggles and pains we could have escaped but since we have not stayed awake and pray we will have to go through this many families father why these things happened why this problem happens why this crisis happened why these trials happened the answer is if we would have prayed if we could have prayed and did have done some sacrifices and penances this would not have happened praise the lord so this is the 10th mistake of um of the 11th mistakes of uh, of it is the 10th um, sin of peter and the next 11th one the peter he always expected reward his sacrifice his service of the lord was he was expecting reward we read like this matthew chapter 19 verse 27 he had a secret desire peter said in reply look we have left everything and followed you then what then will we have we sacrifice everything and what we are following you then what are we going to get tell me so peter he is so you know he was expecting some some special blessings some things reward some position some power or something he was expecting so he said we are sacrifice we have sacrificed and left everything and and followed you so what then what then will we have then what did jesus say jesus said to them truly i tell you at the renewal of all things when the son of man is seated on the throne of his glory you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel so jesus said about what is going to happen is death after the death so jesus told all what is waiting for them not before the death but after the death all our rewards are not before the death but after the death 
all the goodness will be rewarded but not before the death but after the death before the death if you want goodness and blessings just hold on to god natural blessings will come the reward will be given to you only after the death so in the before the death sin will have consequence goodness will have its own consequences and we will go through that but after the death all the goodness that we have done there will be a reward waiting for us praise the lord thank you jesus so that is what was his mistake and then so the fifth the 12th mistake of saint peter was he had overconfidence in his own capacity he was overconfident about himself and that has made have made him to fall into sin so my dear brothers and sisters these are the 12 sins of peter these days we were reflecting about so let us examine our conscience and see do we have these problems do we have these temptations do we have these sins in our life if so whatever that peter had to go through we may also have to go through but peter repented and came back so he is made first pope if therefore if you repent and come back there is something special waiting for you something some special blessing the lord has kept for you